Now, how do we numerically calculate the pH of a particular buffer solution? Again, um, let's stick with the equilibrium that's going on here. And just to fill in some things. That equilibrium. Remember that water is a liquid. And so we can build our generic ice table here. And again, this is in molar concentrations. And again, we're going to keep this as symbolic as possible because things will clean up in the end. So initially, I'm going to call the weak acid concentration HA0. The conjugate base concentration A minus 0. And we're going to assume that the initial hydronium concentration is zero. And because of that, you can assume some forward progress, which means we will lose some amount of the HA, giving us HA zero minus X molar concentration at the end. Um, we're going to gain X molar concentration of A zero, giving us A minus zero plus X molar at equilibrium. And for the hydronium, we're going to gain X molar as well and give us X molar hydronium at equilibrium. So let's look at our Ka expression. And we can rearrange for it. So the hydronium ion concentration is going to be equal to the Ka times HA minus X, HA zero minus X, and A minus initial plus X. And assuming that Um, if the Ka, if this is a truly weak, uh, weak acid, K is going to be small, that amount X will be small, which means that that expression can be approximated to Ka equals HA initial divided by A minus initial. And furthering, taking us a little bit further, so here's that point we were at in the previous slide. And now let's convert this to a pH. So remember, pH is the negative base 10 log of this hydronium concentration. So let's take the base 10 log of both sides of this equation right here. So we've got negative, and again, if you're not familiar with how log math works, um, products when you take logs, um, become sums. And so we have the negative base 10 log of the hydronium equals the negative base 10 log of the Ka minus the base 10 log of HA over A minus. Remember I said there's sums, but the definition of a P function has that negative term in front of it. So trust me, this is how the math works out. And to simplify this, this is often looks like this. Um, so this, this factor here, this negative base 10 log of the Ka is called pKa, and minus the base 10 log of the ratio of the acid and its conjugate base. And because for some reason people don't like this negative sign here, um, this, is, this has been changed to pH equals pKa plus the base 10 log of the ratio of A minus to HA. So when you flip this fraction right here, you flip the sign that goes in front of the log. And this is an important result enough to be called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And again, this tells you the pH of a buffer based on a total of three things. The strength of the acid or its pKa, so the stronger an acid is, the smaller its pKa. And the ratio, the relative amounts of the concentration of the weak acid and its conjugate base. All right, so um, now the process, what we just talked about here is that the henderson hasselbalch equation will give you the pH of a buffer solution given the relative amounts of 
the weak acid in its conjugate base. What you also need to be able to do is to predict what the change is going to be after acid or base is added. And that is, it seems like it's a tedious process. It's actually a two-step process. The good news is both of those steps you already know how to do. And we talked about this when I first kind of laid out the, uh, the idea behind the buffer solutions. You've got a weak acid in its conjugate base. If you add a strong acid, there is a quantitative reaction with the, with the base to form the, to form the weak acid. If you add a strong base, there is a quantitative reaction to form the conjugate base. I'm sorry, the, the weak base and react away the, the, the weak acid. And that will give you either one of these will change the amounts and by extension the concentrations of the weak acid and its conjugate base. And then you will use those changed amounts to calculate a new pH based on those amounts that Ka, basically using the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. That's how this usually works. And this is just stoichiometry from, you know, last semester. So this can often be a challenge because there are three different reactions that you need to be aware of. Whichever one of these two is appropriate if you're adding the acid or the base. And then the equilibrium, which is basically the reaction of the weak acid with water. Um, that seems like a lot, so we will do some examples. All right, so here's what we're going to do uh, for our buffer examples. And we're going to start with a lactic acid lactate buffer solution. Um, that's 0.25 molar lactic acid and 0.5 molar sodium lactate. So the Ka of lactic acid is about 1.4 times 10 to the negative 4. This is a pretty strong weak acid, so this is a buffer system that is used to buffer to fairly low pHs. And we're going to calculate the initial pH, and we're going to see what the pH is going to be after we've added 0.05 moles of a strong base, hydroxide, and also um, if we were to add 0.5 molars of a strong acid, namely hydronium. And we'll also in the end compare um, what the change would be if you're adding that same amount of hydroxide and hydronium to pure water to see that these things actually do um, make a solution resistance to pH changes.